de acuerdo en todo, confío en que juntos podremos encontrar mayor prosperidad y seguridad sin perder de vista que la libertad y la independencia aunque no de acuerdo we may en todo, not agree confío. on every matter. I am confident that moving together and forward, we can be more prosperous and secure than ever before, never losing sight of the fact that freedom and independence are the indispensable foundations of all that we cherish. Any close relationships need to be re-examined and renewed every now and then. We should always be open to discuss what's worked and what hasn't. ¿Cómo podemos mejorar las cosas en ambos lados de la frontera? ¿Cómo podemos aclarar y superar malos entendidos y llegar a conocernos mejor? Con ese espíritu, el día pasado se envió una carta a ambos candidatos presidenciales, a la señora Hillary Clinton y al señor Donald Trump, proponiéndole tener un encuentro y conversar de manera constructiva about the joint future of our countries. I have met today with Mr. Donald Trump and I look forward to meet again with Ms. Clinton, with whom I had the pleasure to meet here in Los Pinos in the past. No estar de acuerdo we may not agree temas, on several issues, pero su presencia aquí, but your Trump, presence here, Mr. Trump, shows a fundamental, fundamental coincidence. Our countries son muy are very important el uno for para each other. other. Estados Unidos the United States es is para México, very important for Mexico, México, just as Mexico is very important para los for the United States. States. Compartimos la frontera más transitada del mundo. We share the busiest border in the world. Con la que todos los días cruzan de manera legal más de un millón de personas y cuatrocientos mil vehículos. El comercio entre nuestros países supera los quinientos mil millones de dólares al año. Innovamos y producimos juntos. Y en materia de seguridad nacional, la cooperación diaria Active cooperation on a daily basis between our governments is increasingly important for both our countries to face the challenges of a complex world. The conversation we had between Mr. Trump and myself was very open and constructive. The purpose was to get to know each other and learn about each other's views on the bilateral relationship. On trade, I shared with Mr. Trump my conviction that I fully believe that the NAFTA has been good both for the United States as well as for Mexico. U.S. exports into Mexico are close to 200 billion U.S. dollars. And according to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, over 6 million jobs in America depend on exports to Mexico. Mexico buys more from the United States than from Germany, Spain, France, Italy, Japan, and the United Kingdom combined. Many jobs in the American manufacturing industry were not lost to other regions of the world precisely because of the development and because together we have developed a competitive North American Joint Manufacturing Platform. On average, 40% of the content in Mexican exports is made in the United States. As partners, we should work together to keep jobs from leaving our region. However, this does not mean that the free trade agreement of North America can't be enhanced for the benefit of both sides. NAFTA is a 22-year-old agreement. The next American president will find in my government a partner willing to find ways to modernize NAFTA so it can be more effective in creating more good-paying jobs and a quality 
on both sides of the border. I do not believe trade should be treated as a zero-sum endeavor, one where one must lose so the other one can win. Quite the contrary, it should be seen as efforts creating value for both sides, leading and making our region the most competitive and innovative in the whole world. Regarding border issues, my views are clear. The border should be transformed into an asset for our region. We have made tremendous progress in recent years, working closely with President Obama. And with the next U.S. administration, we should step up our efforts to make sure that the Mexico-U.S. border is more efficient and secure. However, a large number of American people perceive the U.S.-Mexico border as a real problem because undocumented people and illegal drugs cross the border into the U.S. illegally. Undocumented immigration from Mexico into the U.S. peaked about 10 years ago. Yet, it has been steadily declining since then. In fact, being negative when, when speaking about net migration, despite of it, we know there's still a shared challenge, including the large and growing number of non-Mexican nationals that cross our country as a gateway into the U.S., creating humanitarian crises. However, this is a, a complete and incomplete vision of the border issues because it does not take into account the illegal flows that travel south, guns and cash. Every year, thousands of weapons and millions of U.S. dollars in cash enter illegally into Mexico from the north, strengthening the cartels and other criminal organizations that create violence in Mexico and profit from selling drugs in the United States. This has to be stopped. What we need is to have a comprehensive approach to the border whereby we can take into account the flows of undocumented people, illegal drugs, weapons, and cash at the same time. Many lives can be saved in both our countries if criminal organizations are curtailed from the money and guns that allow them to be in business today. The illegal flows of weapons, drugs, and cash in both directions have multiple negative consequences on both sides of the border. Our border should be viewed as a joint opportunity. Both countries should be investing more in the border, more infrastructure, more people, and more technology to make it more secure and efficient. And although I acknowledge the sovereign nation's fundamental right to protect its borders, I truly believe that full collaborative efforts between neighbors and allies are the most effective route. I also express to Mr. Trump the critical importance of the U.S. and Mexico continue working on making our borders secure, being of utmost importance. Also, concerning national security, Mexico and the United States work together to face the challenges of a complex world every day. Security agencies from both sides exchange information and coordinate actions. Regardless of who wins the presidential election in the U.S., the next American administration should expect a continued willingness from the American government to make the North American region a safer region. Mr. Trump, I will restate here what I stated in private. 
My priority as the president of Mexico and that of my government is to protect Mexicans wherever they might be. That is my responsibility, and I will continue fulfilling it with full determination. The Mexican community in the United States contributes daily with its work, talent, and creativity to the prosperity and development of both the United States and Mexico. Mexicans in the United States are honest and hardworking people. They are good-hearted people who respect family, family values. They respect community life and respect the law. Therefore, Mexican people deserve the respect from everyone. Let us continue working in cementing the relationship between Mexico and the United States based on mutual respect, trust, and joint ways of addressing the common challenges we face. I conclude my remarks by saying that the Mexican government will continue to be absolutely respectful of the American electoral process. I recognize your decision in having this constructive dialogue. Di the dialoguing is the way because it brings together those of different thinking. And dialogue is the way because it allows us for mutual and better understanding. Thank you. Let us now hear the words of the Republican candidate to the presidency of the United States of America, Mr. Donald Trump. Thank you. It is a great honor to be invited by you, Mr. President. A great, great honor. Thank you. We had a very substantive, direct, and constructive exchange of ideas over quite a period of time. I was straightforward in presenting my views about the impacts of current trade and immigration policies on the United States. As you know, I love the United States very much, and we want to make sure that the people of the United States are very well protected. You equally expressed your feelings and your love for Mexico. The United States and Mexico share a 2,000-mile border, a half a trillion dollars in annual trade, and one million legal border crossings each and every day. We are united by our support for democracy, a great love for our people, and the contributions of millions of Mexican-Americans to the United States. And I happen to have a tremendous feeling for Mexican-Americans, not only in terms of friendships, but in terms of the tremendous numbers that I employ in the United States. And they are amazing people, amazing people. I have many friends, so many friends, and so many friends coming to Mexico and in Mexico. I'm proud to say how many people I employ. And the United States first, second, and third generation Mexicans are just beyond reproach. Spectacular, spectacular, hardworking people. I have such great respect for them and their strong values of family, faith, and community. We all share a common interest in keeping our hemisphere safe, prosperous, and free. No one wins in either country when human smugglers and drug traffickers prey on innocent people, when cartels commit acts of violence, when illegal weapons and cash flow from the United States into Mexico, or when migrants from Central America make the dangerous trek, and it is very, very dangerous, into Mexico or the United States without legal authorization. I shared my strong view that NAFTA has been a far greater benefit to Mexico than it has been to the United States, and that it must be improved upon to make sure 
that workers, and so important, in both countries benefit from fair and reciprocal trade. I express that to the United States and in that of the United States, that we must take action to stem this tremendous outflow of jobs from our country. It's happening every day. It's getting worse and worse and worse, and we have to stop it. Prosperity and happiness in both of our countries will increase if we work together on the following five shared goals. Number one, ending illegal immigration. Not just between our two countries, but including the illegal immigration and migration from Central and South Americans and from other regions that impact security and finances in both Mexico and the United States. This is a humanitarian disaster. The dangerous treks, the abuse by gangs and cartels, and the extreme physical dangers. And it must be solved. It must be solved quickly. Not fair to the people anywhere worldwide, you can truly say, but certainly not fair to the people of Mexico or the people of the United States. Number two, having a secure border is a sovereign right and mutually beneficial. We recognize and respect the right of either country to build a physical barrier or wall on any of its borders to stop the illegal movement of people, drugs, and weapons. Cooperation toward achieving this shared objective, and it will be shared, of safety for all citizens is paramount to both the United States and to Mexico. Number three, dismantling drug cartels and ending the movement of illegal drugs, weapons, and funds across our border. This can only be done with cooperation, intelligence and intelligence sharing, and joint operations between our two countries. It's the only way it's going to happen. Improving NAFTA, number four. NAFTA is a 22-year-old agreement that must be updated to reflect the realities of today. There are many improvements that could be made that would make both Mexico and the United States stronger and keep industry in our hemisphere. We have tremendous competition from China and from all over the world keep it in our hemisphere. Workers in both of our countries need a pay raise very desperately. In the United States, it's been 18 years, 18 years. Wages are going down. Improving pay standards and working conditions will create better results for all, and all workers in particular. There is a lot of value that can be created for both countries by working beautifully together. And that, I am sure, will happen. Number five, keep manufacturing wealth in our hemisphere. When jobs leave Mexico, the U.S. or Central America, and go overseas, it increases poverty and pressure on social services, as well as pressures on cross-border migration. Tremendous pressure. The bond between our two countries is deep and sincere, and both our nations benefit from a close and honest relationship between our two governments. A strong, prosperous, and vibrant Mexico is in the best interests of the United States and will keep and help keep for a long, long period of time America together. Both of our countries will work together for mutual good, and most importantly, for the mutual good of our people. Mr. President, I want to thank you. It's been a tremendous honor, and I call you a friend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President.
I think excellent. Excellent. Uh, a tremendous respect for the President. Uh, we were actually together for quite some time. And uh, I think excellent. Uh, I was with, as you know, Senator Sessions and uh, Mayor Giuliani. And we had a tremendous uh, more than an hour. I think really very good. Say it, yes? No, not at all. Look, we want what's good for the United States, and the President wants, wants what's good for Mexico. And in sitting down and in talking, we both realize that we've realized this from the beginning, that it's good for both of us. Better for both of us, actually. Yes, John? We didn't discuss that. We didn't discuss who pays for the world. We didn't discuss. Well, I'll start. I mean, nothing like an easy question like that. We did discuss the wall. We didn't discuss payment of the wall. Uh, that'll be for a later date. This was a very preliminary meeting. I think it was an excellent meeting. And uh, we are, uh, I think we're very well on our way. A lot of the things I said are very strong, but we have to be strong. We have to say what's happening. Uh, there is crime, as you know. There's a lot of crime and there's a lot of problems. But I think together we'll solve those problems. I really believe that. The President and I will solve those problems. We will get them solved. Illegal immigration is a problem for Mexico as well as for us. Uh, drugs are a tremendous problem for Mexico as well as us. I mean, it's not a one-way street. And we will work together and we will get those problems solved. Mr. President. I will say, and just as I've said, the government of Mexico shows full respect to the electoral process in the United States. I invited both candidates, and the invitation that was tendered and honored very quickly by Mr. Trump with a private meeting. In addition to the topics that we covered here, we we, we spoke about the importance of having the strategic alliance between both countries. I also spoke about my responsibility as the President of the United of Mexico in defending Mexico and defending Mexicans both in this country and abroad. Have there been erroneous interpretations or affirmations that had sadly impacted and hurt Mexicans in the perception of what he has drawn? And I'm quite respectful. I had also voiced the grievances that we had felt in Mexico because of the statements that have been issued. But I'm sure that his interest is genuine in wanting to build a relation and lead our society to, st to stability. The answers supplied and the invitation tendered to meet with both candidates it was issued in light of these, world, of these words that we can build together and build so based on the foundation of mutual respect towards both countries. And this is what I shared with the candidate. Thank you very much. This concludes this event, and thank we you thank much. all of you for your attendance. Basada.